Okay. Uh, so yeah, while it's main, while while its side benefit mm -hmm. is being able to isolate your hardware, it's really allowing you to focus on one thing at a time. But you, there's no avoiding breadboarding. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because even though we've been working for a while, I think I I was under the impression that um, it was replacing the 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 breadboard for a long time. Yeah, and you know what? A lot of my ad copy that's out there right now, people are getting pissed. <laughs> yeah, because they're they're like it doesn't replace the breadboard, or right. like you know what I mean, right? right. Right. And I, and I think that's, that's actually, yeah, like pretty much where we need to like mainly focus on because yeah, um, on it, but, but, but it's an amazing thing. And my wife put it so good. Oh my, oh my gosh, my wife is so smart, yeah. man. <laughs> uh, she, cause, cause she was just asking more questions. Like, like the last like hour or so we were like, just like diving into this and we like looked at like some of your blogs and some of your creations and she, and she asked me like a bunch of questions and then so all of a sudden she just like keeps quiet, looks at me and she goes, Hmm. She goes, so basically what you're telling me is that his product, it's kind of like the click funnels, but for electronics. I'm like, what do you mean? And she goes, well, yeah. She goes, like, think about it. Like click funnels helps you essentially with two things, like get rid of all the complicated crap that comes from the website and all that, which would be equivalent to like the wiring and the breadboard and all that complicated mm -hmm. stuff. And he goes, and it simplifies it, allowing you to focus on one thing at a time, one page at a time, one split test headline or split test at a time. And he goes, but it also gives you a framework that's so much easier to work with, which is the funnel. Which yeah, is, that, that's perfect. And I was like, shit. I was like, babe, yeah, that's, that's, like, that's like great. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because like, even though, yeah, it solves the main problem of the website, it doesn't fully replace that you don't need to ever like have a like yeah of course you still need to deal with a bunch of stuff which is kind of like the breadboard but ultimately the main thing it solves is that it allows you to focus on the right things and that's what messes up most of us entrepreneurs we want to focus on the posting the social the ads the copy right. the the customers are, and, and we go bananas bonkers overwhelming our minds and then we end up just dropping the towel like this is too much this is too crazy and what we need is a is a doctor doing a kit essentially to come and say, okay, relax. First thing, get the funnel done. Second, traffic. Third, right. split. Oh, okay, great. And so once you put them into that format, it allows you to like really get to that other side. And I think that's what it is. It's almost like bringing that concept of like the one thing, like focus and like, you know, paradigm shift. Um, with your product, you know, because I think a lot of people are still trying to tackle like multiple things and they go from hardware to firmware, from firmware to hardware, and they're bouncing so much that ultimately they don't get anything done. And then we go into the emotional stuff. Right. right? It becomes very frustrating. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, like all this stuff. Um, uh, yeah. Tell your wife that was very insightful. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll tell you that. yeah. I was like, man, that was an amazing connection. You just did that. Um, so, yeah. And so back to, to this question four. It says they're intimidated by the coding aspect, right? So it's interesting because they're intimidated by the coding aspect, but because they're spending so much time frustrated and worried about the hardware, it doesn't even give them the headspace and the focus necessary to approach the coding on the right way. Because Correct. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a huge problem that you solve, and I think that's why you're gonna make a lot of money once we fix this, because it is a freaking big problem. Even though I'm not a an electronics guy, I'm like, oh my gosh, like after diving into this, like, yeah, I can see how, you know, because I just I just look at it in that same, you know, paradox as, as my entrepreneurial journey, and it's always been a lack of focus. And even though people think they understand, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's focus. Yeah, no, of course, concentration is like, no, 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 you don't get it. Right. <laughs> it has to be like hyper, hyper, hyper focus, hyper. You know, laser focus, laser focus. And, and I love what you said on, on, I think your other answer where you're like, I think, uh, here, here, this was really good. Super insightful. You said, if they really want to get started with Arduino, there is the brute force way <laughs> or the Dr. Arduino dewire and conquer way. Yes. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's hyper focus on code. After you're comfortable with controlling the basics, move uh, 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 the basics, comma, yeah, like move on to to hardware. 
Yes. At, at that point, the breadboard also comes back into play. There's no avoiding it, but focusing on one thing at a time is crucial to success. This is literally like where your message, I, I believe, stems the most. But the problem is that you can't just say it that way because most people won't, won't absorb it that way. Right. The, the, they'll say, yeah, yeah, of course, I know. No, 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 you don't know. So, you, so, so our challenge is like, okay, we understand this is what they need to know and this is the big epiphany they need to get for them to buy, like no doubt. Like if they understand that, they'll be like, oh my gosh, like, like it's like a big aha moment and that's mm -hmm. why they, when they buy it. But the, the main challenge is that we need to tell the right stories that you've personally gone through in sequential order so that they arrive at, that, at this conclusion themselves. So you're not telling them, oh, you know, the re the, you need to focus on one thing at a time and that's why you're failing. Like, if you tell them that, like, it'll fly over their heads. Mm. They don't get it yet. So you need to lead them so that they're like, oh my gosh, I've been focusing on too many things at once. Thank God for the Dr. Duino Dewire and mm. Conquer way because now I understand I can focus on my coding. Oh, finally, once that's done, then I move to the other piece. Then I can show my family and enjoy that amazing feeling of pride and exactly. you know, confidence. And yes, yes. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, even just hearing you talk about it, it's like it's now clear that it's like even, oh. <laughs> that you that you get it too. Like now, yeah. I, it's I, I can see you get it. Yeah, exactly. And if I can get it, and I'm not in electronics, you can certainly make someone get it so much easier that understands the, the issue, the problem. Now, our biggest challenge is what stories are we going to say? So, so cool. Okay, great. So, so now that we got that piece, um, yeah, everything else you've said, it's, it, it's in line. Yeah. It, it's frustration. Um, I think, um, if we were to put it uh, here, here, um, let me know if you, if you can see the, the green, the green, um, text that I got here. Yes, I can see it. Perfect. Yeah, so I think one of the things we need to um, focus on on building a story is being able to essentially lead people from like the external problem that we know it's like, of course, they never get to build their invention. It's a lot of waste of time and money, whether it's with a cheap kid that ends up costing them more or whether it's with a lot of time frustrated because they just didn't even know about a better solution. That's the external. So time and money, it's all external. It's all external, but really we need to lead them in from the external to the internal, which is the fear of failure, feel like feeling stupid, humiliated. And I think that the best way to tell that story is with your own personal story, because you've already lived through this, through your Kickstarter campaigns. You put yourself out there and you had to wrestle through the fear of failure through the humiliation, even after it failed, you still picked yourself back up. Like that's really remarkable. That's like really like that needs to be, that's worthy of being shared, you know? And even, not even though yeah. it's not in the same, cause Shapoopi was, you know, piece of plastic with a simple circuit inside. And then Dr. Duvino came, you, you know what I mean? Um, but you also had the glow scenes. Uh, glow scenes was after. So actually, Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, the order of it was um, Shapoopi, then Orbis, because Orbis was my, my wound licking project. That's what oh, I call it. I see, yeah. And then Dr. Duino came out of Orbis. Yeah, yeah. I think it's super relevant because, once again, it's not so much about the external aspect of what was it, the Shapoopi, what shit did this. You know, in, in your mind, you might be thinking, man, I don't know if that story is powerful enough because, you know, I'm not dealing with the you know, with the Arduino itself or with mm -hmm. the Orbis itself, but, but no, because ultimately what, what that story does is not so much tell them about this specific invention is the fact that they, it's the same problem internally that they have. It's the fear of failure. It's feeling humiliated. And I think you told me this, I think you expressed this um, on our last call. You said like, yeah, like I was really humiliated after like it kind of the ship would be failed and like all, you know, my family, yeah. friends and all that stuff. But you still managed to pick yourself back up, go into the wound, wound leaking project Orbis, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Push through that. And now you're on the other side selling successfully another product that you that that if you didn't go through that process of, you know, healing from your fear of failure, healing from your, you know, lower self-esteem at the time, healing from being humiliated or feeling stupid, then you would never, you know, we would never have taken the steps that you took to where you are now. 
Yeah, for sure. Okay, then, then, I, then I can see it. Because that's the same thing that they're feeling right now. Most of your, of your clients, you know, based on what you've told me on this sheet, are struggling with self-esteem because either their mom, their dad, their teacher, their brother, or their own selves are saying the same thing. You can't do this. Stop wasting your time on this. Go get a job. Go do something. You know, like all this creation stuff is BS. Stop trying. Mm -hmm. And that is putting their, their, their you know, self-esteem to the floor. Mm -hmm. And they need to hear that guy, that Yoda, that like, you know, coach, that, you know, uh, hero of this, uh, of the story, you know, in a way to say, listen, I know exactly how you feel. It's not your fault. You've been taught in like a really rigged way and, and, and no one's taught you properly. It doesn't have to be that complicated, you know, and, and if you trust me on this, I'll take you to the other side and the same way how I conquer my fear of failure and my insecurities and all that through, you know, my failed project. And now I'm here, I'll take you to that same thing and whatever you want to do, whether that looks like a Goonie box, a, a Shupipi, a whatever, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. You're, you're the creator. Uh, all I'm doing is giving you the right path, the right plan to succeed. Okay. I guess I, I I'm going to have to see how, like mm -hmm. how we put it together. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think I'm still not clear, but okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. R exactly. Right now, it's kind of like a, you know, a, a little abstract still, but now yeah. I'm going to start asking you questions. So, okay. Okay. So question one, because I, I wrote the, this one's down, so I think it will give us a lot of light. Um, yeah. When did you know you had a passion and love for engineering and for, you know, creating? Like, can you remember a specific oh, yeah. time? Yeah. Tell me this. Yeah. So I was uh, seven years old mm -hmm. and uh, my, my uncle is a physicist. He uh, came home. Uh, well, he, he stopped by and he visited uh, and he brought me what was called a crystal radio kit. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And the crystal radio kit uh, was something that you kind of build really quick. Um, and uh, it had a green LED on it. And I remember just staring at the LED going, I have no idea what that thing is, but I want to do a lot of that. <laughs> wow, that's cool. <laughs> and that was it. Like from, from that day forward, I was like, I'm going to be an engineer. Wow. Man, that's powerful. Yeah. See, like, like that, that small story right there, that could literally be like, you know, part of the body or, you know, kind of like angle of the ad. Like imagine an ad that says something along, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just like brainstorming yep. right now, mm -hmm. but just so you kind of see the application and we can draw like parallels. Um, so imagine an ad that said like, you know, have you always known that, that you wanted to create, you know, electronics or you wanted to tinker with electronics? You know, for me, it was when I was seven years old, my uncle being a physicist, brought, one day brought the crystal radio kit. And man, oh man, I remember that day was magical. I was staring at that LED and something inside of me was palpitating. There was a fire in me that said, I want more of this. I want to become a, a creator of whatever, LED, like whatever that is. I don't know yet what it is, but I just know. And I knew when I was seven years old that I wanted to be an engineer. Yeah, does that, that's, does yeah, that that's sound powerful. familiar? Does that sound yeah. familiar to you? And everyone will be like, yeah, me too. When I was 12, when I was 13, when I was 17, when I was two, when I was whatever, whatever their story is. We all engineers will probably have an origin story of like, this is what happened. And this is why I got like super excited. And it's probably when you saw some crazy cool invention, whether in a video or in a movie or in an ad or in whatever. That's mm -hmm. why it's powerful when you share like, you know, the Goonie box, because that could be the origin story for someone else to say, oh my gosh, I remember I randomly got this ad from a guy that was like, I didn't even know, but he showed me this really cool invention. Something about it just gave me that epiphany. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I definitely see a lot of stories <laughs> like that on Facebook. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay. So here's another question for you. What is it about it that drew you into it? Um... I, it, control is kind of the wrong word because that sounds like uh, controlling, <laughs> if, you, if you know what I mean. But it was just the the ability of of you know essentially being able to make something do what you wanted it to do, and it it just had this really. Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to think like that's yeah, yeah, no, for that just, specific mm -hmm. one, like mm -hmm. for for that specific time, or like with with Orbis, with Orbis or Goonie or, or any one of them. Any one of them. 
Okay, so then let's then that one's a little bit too rudimentary. I don't think that that really strikes a chord. Um, well, if th there was a transitional story when I went from mm -hmm. something like Orbis to something like Goonie Box, because mm -hmm. when, when people first come to my home, like if they've if they've never been here before, mm -hmm. it, it, I, I love just watching them because it's they get drawn in like a moth to a flame. Mm. And you know they're the, you know they're kind of mouths just open and and they're like what what is that you know, mm -hmm. um, and with Orbis it was something that uh, you know I have to show people how to use it like you wouldn't intuitively know how to use it. Mm -hmm. When I wanted to create something more, mm -hmm. I said you know I want this next piece to be something which I don't have to explain it at all. You just go over to it and and you know how to use it. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if that does that answer it. Probably not, right? I and I think we're we're starting to get there, but yeah, like you know, what what would you say you know it it creates or 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 does for you? You know, what I mean, like before you you started the the Goonie box before you you know, I, and I think is the same one to be honest of that seventy year old Guido. What do you think is ultimately what? creates that feeling of like feeling of what like what is that mm, that like really drives it which i which i again I, i'm asking this question because i think is the same mm, once we define what it is the mm. same one that the, that your client has that in, internally it's it's driving it, it manifests as the creation but what's that mm, like internal that what's that feeling uh awestruck yes that's, yes. that's definitely the feeling. I mean, whenever I create something and, and somebody else sees it, yes, they, they you know, I, I just, I really get a kick out of like seeing how much they enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. What so, does, what does awestruck cost in you? Um, I guess elation, just re really happy and, pr you know, proud, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, happy to be able to give that to somebody else. Yeah 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 so like a transference almost mm -hmm. would you say it kind of comes with almost like a sense of like power like personal power type of thing personal power i don't know maybe i mean maybe you know a, more uh, a sense of like huge accomplishment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i would yeah. say that's more like it and i think when, when when i said the word uh or yeah personal power I mean, that kind of like empowering way where it's just, uh, yes. like, oh, you get that. <sighs> Ooh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. For yes. sure. So I believe that's like literally the main thing that it is. I think that ultimately what it allows them to do at a, at a deeper psychological, emotional level, it's empowerment, right? That's why, that's why the first thing you said was control. You're like, ah, I don't know if it sounds, yeah, because it's not control in the sense of like oh you want to control yeah exactly it's, it, it's a sense of like empowerment that like man i can make my ideas transform into like the material i can make something or think of something that ultimately not only gives me empowerment but i can transfer that empowerment to someone else and you know that's the yeah, best that's a good, feeling yeah that's a good angle actually i like that yeah, because it's, you know, and this kind of goes in, in line with the, the course that overall that I want to create, mm -hmm. which is, let me show you how to take that, that flash of light that you have in your head yes, and breathe life into it. Yes. I can show you that. Exactly. Exactly. That is so powerful because once again, it does not matter if you're an entrepreneur or you want to tinker with electronics. It's that same sense of empowerment. It's like, man, I have a dream. And I want to prove to myself, I want to, I want to build my own confidence, my own self-esteem to be able to cross to the other side. And not because you need to prove it to someone else. Again, it's not about like, oh, like it's for my mom. Like it's for your right. own it's self. For it's for yourself because you know that when you're on, like you've already lived it many times and you, and you live it on a day-to-day -day basis where like you have an idea and you make something and then you get that rush of feeling that like, oh, and you can't wait to show other people because you want to give them that same sense of like, look what it's possible. And the same thing that is possible, it's possible for you too. Yeah. I think that'll, that'll resonate mm -hmm. very loudly with, with that mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because empowerment is, is really powerful, especially in a, in an age and a, and a, and a society and era that we live in that tends to disempower you. 
You know, mm. Everything around them is meant to disempower in them. You know, everyone is telling them, this is how things gotta go. As, you know, you, you study, you get a job, and then you, and then that's it. And then you maybe have a family and then you die. And it's all right. so monotonous and it's all right. so like plain and it's so disempowering. That's like, man, like, is that really it? And then you come in and you say, no, 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 hold on. You can be a creator. You know, you can be, you can have this sense of like, like, like you shape your own destiny, you know, like that, that whole, uh, you know, click funnels narrative, you know, like we are create, like, you know, you can shape your own reality type of thing. You know what I should share with you. So when I first started teaching the kids and this mm -hmm. was just kind of a, a silly thing that I came up with, but yeah, I, wanted, tell me, tell me. I wanted to show them some, let me just see if I can find it real quick. Basically, you know, they would, you know, imagine having 14 year old kids who are, who they have no idea who the hell I am. And they're just kind of yeah. looking at me like I'm this, like this weird guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I made them sign this piece of paper that said, what I'm about to teach you is superpowers. Yeah. And you have two choices. You can use your superpowers for good, or you can use them for evil. Uh, if you use them for evil, I won't teach you anymore. Yeah. But if you use them for good, it's amazing what you can do. Yes. I um, love that. Let me see if I can think. I up, love that. I and even that story in itself of like, you know what, like, like going like a little bit deeper into it and kind of describing that, you know, painting that picture and being like, yeah, you know, this 14 year old kids, like, like you preframe them. It's a preframe. It's a powerful preframe where you just get them like excited. Now you're like, Oh my gosh, like there's like power in this. Oh my God. Like, is that again, sense of empowerment? You know? Yeah. They, um, oh yeah, here it is. Nice. Let me yeah, I actually even had their parents sign it because I, I, I met with their parents here at my house oh, and cool. uh, I was like, here, you guys need to like sign this because a don't sue me because what I'm about to teach them really is powerful. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, let me... yeah. I like that a lot. And I'm going to, I'm going to dig a little deeper into some of stores. I got a couple more questions before we transition into the others part. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll wait for you to show me that first. Let me... My computer would cooperate. Yeah, we actually just finished the project, which came out awesome. Uh, I'm going to share Good. it. Good. Yeah. Okay. Why doesn't that one? Uh... What's your favorite movie? Uh, oh my goodness. Probably uh, the Goonies. <laughs> the Goonies, yeah. Yeah. Probably the Goonies, yeah. Uh, here, let me, there's the one document. So this was like our contract. Let me see. Hold on, I still don't see the screen yet. Oh, I shared a link with you on uh, oh, sorry. Messenger. Yeah, sorry. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, hold on. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So there's that. And then mm -hmm. there's, let me see if I can. And we actually ended up making uh, a rocket launcher. Um, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, 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 I love it. It's that creativity mixed with empowerment. That's really yeah. powerful. Yeah. Creativity and empowerment. Those are two big, like, like major pillars in like your messaging. Because the creativity has to do with the external needs that they want. And the empowering has to do with the internal needs. Mm. Let that like rest. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find that sometimes we confuse um, external, internal, and like, you know, which one's which. And, and so it's interesting because even though sometimes it's hard to transition to the internal, like more emotional and stuff like that, because it gets abstract for people, the way to do it is not to tell them. The way to do it is to like, just tell them the story about it. You know, like there, there's two ways I can tell you, you know, oh, uh, if I want to communicate a concept of, of creativity, I can just say like, listen, creativity is really cool because it allows you to be your own creator and, and you shape your own reality. And you're like, okay, great. Or I can be like, man, let me tell you about like the most important day of my life. 1950 mm. started when da da da. And then I go into man, like 
that day when I played that first chord to the girl I loved, I knew that I had like an artist in me. And that day, everything shifted, and you're like, oh my gosh, like creativity is amazing. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the same thing that we're going to do in your messaging right now. So far, it's been very like, this is what it can do, like very just like straightforward. And now we need to connect more emotionally. And the best way to do it is just to, to just be you. Just to yeah. just be you. You have, a, you have a bunch of really cool stories. You have like Kickstarter stories. And have you ever read uh, Expert Secrets, by the way? I have the book. I just have not gotten a chance to, to read yeah. it. Easy, easy. Just literally just read the introduction. Mm -hmm. he, he, he literally starts like it's a page. It's literally like three pages. Like you can read it in like 10 minutes. But mm -hmm. li literally he starts his story talking about the famous potato gun story. Oh, yes. Yeah, and yeah. this is like your Shipupi story. Literally. That's it's, interesting. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like read it, read it and, and try to like draw parallels to like some of your stories. And I think you, you'll see yourself there. And the reason he leads with that story is because then it gives people or supposed to give people the epiphany of like, Oh wow. Yeah. So the same way how he figure out this whole potato thing, you know, I can figure it out for myself in my X, Y, Z niche. Because ultimately, he's selling the same thing. He's not selling the fact that, oh, I'm going to be a, a, a potato gun. And he even says, like, you probably don't want to do a, a, a potato gun yourself. But, but you can apply the same exact thing on, on how to sell it, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So read it. That, that's just like a fun thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay. I, I, if you're sharing your screen, I can't see it. Um, Hold on. Tell me when you can, when you can see it. Uh, yep. Uh, yes. Now I can. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Cool. So yeah. Um, so just keep keep those things in mind. Um, let's dive deeper into into some of your um, stories. So, um, was there someone specifically? that you followed or a family member or a friend that became almost that role model, that guide, that Oracle, like in the matrix, like Oracle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, for sure. Yes. Who, who was it? Like, can you go a little bit into that story? Like, what was it about? Who was it? Why did you start yeah. following or yeah. Tell me. So I, right, this goes into a little bit of like a deeper stuff, but mm -hmm. um, this was, what's my, what time is it? Four ten? Yeah, probably. Sorry, Andre is just Yeah, no the, the dog trying, yeah. trying to see if she needs her medications or not. Yeah. Um yeah, so when I was ten, my uh my mother had passed from colon cancer. Mm -hmm. Um and my my dad, uh, you know, he's he's like straight off the boat, right? And um just had no idea what the hell to do to do with us. what's his background? Uh, he's a tailor or he was a tailor. He, he retired a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and he married this, uh, oh my God, just, uh, you want to talk about ice queen? Wow. <laughs> she mm -hmm. <said> like, <laughs> she is an ice queen anyway. Um, so childhood was pretty sucky. Um, and my uncle had kind of, if it, if it wasn't for him, there's no mm -hmm. question that my sister and I would be like, I'd be an alcoholic somewhere. There's no right. question. I'd be, right. I'd be in a ditch somewhere for sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he, him and my grandmother for wow. the most part really raised us, you know, thank God for them. Yeah. For oh sure. my God. For sure. Oh my God. So Oof. he, yeah, it was, it was just really shitty. I mean, if I, it's just really shitty. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so he was always the one who was showing me like, science and, and the power of what you could do with mathematics and hey look look at the, hey why don't we go and build something this weekend or with i mean even to this day like i mean he if if i become a, uh, an eighth of the man that he is uh, i i will be very happy you know wow. um, and he he's yeah. the reason why i decided to teach the kids right because it's like a pay it forward mm -hmm kind of thing for me um because he was such a huge huge pillar in, in my life 
Wow. Sorry, not, not, not to give you too much detail. No, there. no, no. I love this. No, I'm, 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 I'm taking notes. No, no. It, it's good. Like this, this level of detail is good because, like, this is kind of like obviously, like you know, you're you're free to to make the call of how deep you want to go, how much detail you want to give, whatever. Like sometimes the detail is not so much what matters, but it's kind of like the the narrative of the whole story because you, you can tell the story in like you know an hour and really dive into it or you can tell it in like a minute like you just did they said listen like my mother passed i was 20 years old you know this happened and all of, all of a sudden obviously like your life shifted and the new woman like oh my gosh like horrible all this but thank god for you know my uncle and you know my grandma and you know that he took the time to like show me the power of mathematics and, and he wanted to you know, get me to, to, to build things with him and to, and to dive deeper into all this stuff because clearly yeah, he was into this stuff. He was a physicist and, you know, and, and it's great that the story is so consistent. Like when you were seven years old, you were staring at that LED with that crystal radio kit. And when you were 10 years old, like, you know what I'm saying? Like everything yep. is like, boom, boom, like enter the guide. And so it's interesting because let me just um, share my screen. So... Um, mm -mm. so this right I, I i love going back to this because it's a very easy way to like simplify it um because your story is like this like okay so there's here's guido and he uh and he has a problem you know the problem is he wants to um be a creator and he wants to use all these cool talents and, and things that he has like in him but but needs to train them and needs to harvest them and of course you know he doesn't have the best childhood and he has all these different things that he's like struggling with but meets a guide and that's the uncle and then the this uncle becomes, it, it falls into it really does fall into it that's so it bizarre. really does fall into it it's so bizarre and this and the same and, and, and that's why what i want to like you know kind of do today and kind of leave you with for this next week is for you to put together your story in the format I'm going to give you that obviously, you know, kind of has a little bit of this too, mm -hmm. because then, yeah, then of course, what did your, your uncle give you the plan? Well, he said, listen, there's power in physics, there's power in mathematics, there's power in engineering, because when you can do this for the right reasons, like you said, you know, you can use it for evil or you can use it for good. <laughs> right. You know, like, like did, do you remember a time where your uncle like, literally told you that, that like, it was like powerful and like, that you could use it for good or for evil? Because if, if, if that was like a true story, that would be like huge. Like, <laughs> No, actually, you know where I get that from? A number of, uh, this was probably when I first started my career, uh, a couple of working years in, I was doing consulting on the side and I yeah. got this, I got this one guy who contacted me and he's like, I want to be able to turn on a light from a mile away. I'm like, mile away now mind you this is after you know uh 9 11 and whatnot i'm like <laughs> why do you want to turn on a light from a mile away and i'm almost thinking should i be calling like homeland security because this is weird right mm -hmm. anyway i end up calling the guy just because i'm like i gotta i have mm -hmm. to know more like what the hell this is all about and it turns out you know those i don't know what kind of a car that they're called but they're like these little race cars that you put yourself in and they're in dirt but they have this giant foil wing on the back of it have you ever seen that? I don't know. Apparently, they go on fire a lot. And uh, yeah, so, so his son was driving them and wants to be able to notify the driver that, hey, you have a fire. Let me show you a light. Right. Oh. So in that moment, I was like, boy, that th the very same application can be used to turn on a light or to explode a bomb. Wow. And <laughs> yes. And then you were like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. 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 So That's you know, great. The yeah. power. That story is great. Yeah. Like those, those are some of those, um, you know, cause eventually you'll learn that you gotta be, you know, with your content blocks and all this, all the crazy things we talk about, like it really does well down to having like a, uh, an inventory of like mini stories like that. Right. So even just in this conversation, you've told me, you know, um, you can still see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you've told me kind of like that origin story when you were seven, you've told me a little bit of what drew you and that empowering and creativity and all this. And you also told me the, this story of like, you know, your uncle kind of like enter. And so it's interesting because as we're going through it, we're literally kind of going through this. Yeah. It's, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Crazy. And so, you know, what was the plan or, 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 or what was the, you know, obviously the 15 years of, of, of career now, the, the plan was, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to study this. I'm going to go. And that probably in itself 
was what gave you that drive and power to be like, okay, I'm not going to turn into a crazy alcoholic and end in a ditch because I think I have a purpose and my purpose is greater yep. to, to help other people and to teach them and to give them that same power that my uncle gave me. Yeah, for sure. Right. So all of a sudden, as we're going through it, we're realizing that that character, yes, right now it's you, how we're telling this story, but that character is your customer. Mm. And now you become the guide, you become the uncle. Mm, okay. Yeah, I see it. This was all very abstract when we first went through it, but now yeah. I, I get it. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time. And I think that the piece that was missing is to like extract it from you. So I got actually a, a couple more stories. Uh, yeah. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about when, um, what, like, what was the first thing you built? Maybe the second thing, the third thing, like, tell me a couple of the things, but, but maybe the first one, let's start with the first thing you built that you had that, oh my gosh, and maybe that didn't have to be the, you know, like so recent, maybe that happened before you were an engineer. I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to think, cause it was, so I guess if I, to keep it like microcontroller based, mm -hmm. Um, cause I, I'm telling, I've been building stuff since I popped out, <laughs> like <laughs> I've built all sorts of weird things. Um, well, the one story I think I gave you inside of the, the, uh, the sheet, which was basically, mm -hmm. I was trying to make a, a plastic pumpkin when it noticed you walking by would spray you with silly putty. Like literally, you know, in a jack-o'-lantern, the, 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 the top comes up. Like I wanted, I wanted the silly string can to pop up out of it and then spray mm -hmm. you with it, but mm -hmm. only when you walked by. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> but um, this was like pre Arduino and pre three D printers, so my what I had available was very limited, um, and that that's when I got my first real exposure to like controlling things with mm -hmm. with microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. um, so. That was probably, I would say, the first, first project. Mm -hmm. um, the s second one was that one that you saw with the Santa Claus coming out of the chimney. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that was like a, actually a quantum leap from mm -hmm. doing the pumpkin to the Santa Claus thing. Mm -hmm. That was a quantum leap <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. um, after that... I created this, I, I don't have pictures of it. I, I have the actual unit, mm -hmm. but okay. So, so go with me here for a minute because this mm -hmm. is a, a, a product which I want to bring to market. I just haven't had the right. Share the screen? Uh, no, I, there's nothing to share. Okay. It's just, um, so if you think about anything electronic, mm -hmm. right, it, it doesn't matter if it's a, a television, a space shuttle, mm -hmm. uh, your remote control, they all use some form of either lights, sound, communication, and motion. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what it is. So I had created this board called the LSMC, which was light, sound, motion, and communication. Um, so that board, I actually sold it to a company called Jameco. They were a big uh, electronics distrib distributor. Cool. Mm -hmm. But it never went anywhere because it was like, again, this was, I was doing this stuff like when this, these kinds of things were uh, kind of unheard of. Like you don't, right. you just don't do that kind of stuff. Right. right. Um, and it, it, it kind of fell on it, on its face, but that project was another quantum leap because that really mm -hmm. solidified a ton mm -hmm. of my theory into one project. Mm -hmm. Um so with that, I made this, uh, I called a wine clock. So this was when uh, blue LEDs had first come out and I was just infatuated with blue LEDs. It was mm -hmm. just the coolest thing I'd ever seen. So basically 72 LEDs, um, which every hour would kind of chime this song. I'll take a video of it for you because it's kind of a neat thing. Yeah, to see. yeah, I'd love to. Mm -hmm. um, and every hour it sings a song. Uh, <laughs> Oh, she was stretching. Um, sing, it sings a song from Josh Groban. You know who he is? Uh, I've heard him, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so he has a song called Vincent. And the, the, the whole point of the, of the song is how an invention drives the creator crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, I love that. Yeah, it, it, it's like a paradox sometimes. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I think oh. every creative goes through that too, you know? Sorry, my, if you hear my dog back, she's... Oh, barked. no. Is she recovering? Yeah, she's coughing, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. 
yeah, I don't know if you saw the picture, but the stent that they put in was like six or seven inches. I think it's crazy. Oh, it, it looks imagine? crazy. Yeah, yeah, like poor thing. I can I can't even like yeah, imagine what that would be like. She, she's been through hell. Um, but anyway, so so did that answer your your question? Yes, that answered my question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's really good. Um, yeah. No, this is good, man. Like we're 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 like extracting basically, you know, the different essentially like the highlights right because like we're we're kind of like telling this story in a way um whether covertly or not that kind of follows this okay and and i'll say um yeah i, I think the the homework would be read the intro and secret seven and eight really that's really where you need like a, a lot of the other stuff it's already covered but if you can go into the Expert Secrets book and read the intro and Secrets 7 and 8. Oh, Secrets 7. Oh, okay. It's, it's like separated out into secrets, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like chapters. Yeah. It's like chapter 7 yeah. and chapter 8. Yeah. Yeah. Just those two because it goes into the Epiphany Bridge script. And so it's interesting because the Epiphany Bridge script, what it does, it, it offers a, a format or a framework that it's really easy to just kind of plug your different pieces of your story right because like we understand we don't want to go too much into too many detail where people get lost in the story and now they're like okay like i don't even know if i want to buy this or like whatever like it's not about you buddy or like whatever you know but not too little detail that it's that it feels that you're not connecting with them right so it's that nice middle point i think that this um this offers it so let me give you an example with um with kind of like my own like how, how i tell stories to usually like mm -hmm. get clients get clients right so let's say i'm trying to get another like coaching client like yourself okay mm -hmm. so this is kind of what i would do okay so my backstory uh the backstory what it really does is it allows you to to basically give them a reason give people a reason of why why they should be vested in your story like why they should be like at all like hooked into it you know and one of the easiest ways to to do that is to put the hero or the or the main character in danger like all, mm -hmm. the, all, all the best movies always start with like okay maybe the the um, yeah, like something happened to them, like life happened to them, right? So in your case, like your, 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 your mother passing or even my, my wife's case, like, you know, her dad like ran away when she was like so young or like stuff like that just automatically creates and builds rapport because you're like, oh my gosh, so that's like crazy. And you, 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 you empathize with the character like right away. So my backstory has to do more with like a de near death experience. So I would tell you. Oh, really? Yeah, I would tell you. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, uh, honestly, like you know, my my, I had wonderful parents. They're still married. Like I've been, I've been blessed that I always was raised in like a, a home that was super loving, so amazing, like perfect parented type of thing. Like nothing, you know, to complain there. But my story is more of like my own rebellion. So my story kind of starts my backstory with me going to surf with my best buddy in Mexico when I was nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was in my rebellious stage. I wanted to get my tattoo. I was like, ah, oh, my parents are super old school. Like all these different right, things. Right. And so, but they finally let me, you know, first time ever, like go for a few days on your own, like eight hours away from like the city, you know, eight hours from where we are. So it was a big step. And, you know, I partied and I had fun. But one day I went into the ocean and I was feeling extra cocky and extra whatever because I was, you know, being just stupid. <laughs> right, just being a kid. Yeah. Being a kid, yeah, yeah, being 19. And I went deeper into the ocean because I wanted to ride some bigger waves, right? Or I thought I could tackle some bigger waves. And one huge wave, bro, came and it crushed, like just literally like wiped the crap out of me and it broke my leash. So my, 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 my board flew, whew, like out like wow. to the ocean. and I was in the middle of the ocean in like a big set of waves with like no surfboard, nothing to stand on and just starting to drown. Holy crap. What'd you do? Yeah. Well, another wave came and it just like my, it took my breath away completely. You know, I started swallowing water. My lungs started closing. I was literally like on the verge of death. Yeah, that's crazy. Literally, like under like fifteen feet or so of water. So I remember that a wave took me all the way to like the bottom, and I even like hit my my knee, hit my face, like on the sand, or something being like uh -huh. wiped out. And I remember that with the very few little like you know, like barely nothing of oxygen that I had, I looked up, like 
towards like the surface and i'm like man like this is like there's like 10 15 feet of water like there's no way like this is like it you know and i and i said a prayer to myself i said god like i guess this is it like in like if you're real or whatever like in your hands i commit my spirit type of thing you know and as soon as i finished saying that the water just dropped really the water just dropped the water just dropped i could stand back in my feet and i looked and the and the waves were just like appeased like no really? more waves were coming yeah and i was like <laughs> what the heck and so yeah like ever since that day i was like of course like yeah like god save me like all this stuff and like my narrative kind of starts there that's crazy yeah because that's the day that i knew okay obviously you know with the universe god source call it whatever you may you know right right call it call it life you know like yeah, for, for for simplicity's sake um but obviously i have a purpose like there's a reason why i gotta be on this earth and so my desires now become external i wanna i wanna achieve like you know something in the world i wanna i wanna be somebody and my internal is you know, I am here for a reason and I want to prove that I'm here for a reason. And it's that confidence, right? And so, and so my wall becomes, of course, my own stubbornness, my own, like, you know, being all over the place, not being able to focus enough. And so my epiphany comes in like, well, I wanted to start a business. That's my, that's my story. You know, I want to start a business. I realized that, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I think that's really what I'm supposed to do. I am not for the workforce and all this stuff, but I realized that it's so much harder than I thought so much harder so then my conflict was me losing a thousands and thousands of dollars and like struggling and my marriage almost like to the you know under on the rocks and my faith on the rocks and my finances on the rocks and all this conflict but finally after you know hiring coaches and pushing through a ton of pain you know i was able to finally at least build a business that no i'm not a millionaire or crazy yet but i have you know a business that i've been living off for the last few years and now both me and my wife are in the business and we can basically plan our life, plan our, our, our weeks, and, and we have a lot more freedom than we used to. Yeah, right? that's an, yeah, that's an awesome story. So I, I just, you know, and that story just gives you the couple epiphanies. First of all, you're like, man, like, I, 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 I like this guy because he went through this, like, story and like, oh, man, like, that's tough. Like, good for him, you know? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the epiphany, that starts to merge now with you because you're like, man, I kind of have that epiphany now. I kind of realize that I am in for more, that I am not supposed to just stay at my job and all this. I have so much knowledge, so much things to give to the world that I want to be an entrepreneur. But your plan is you're probably stuck. You're, you're in conflict. And so when I tell you that one of my big epiphanies was that I had to hire coaches and spend money and all that, then in your mind, you're like, man, maybe I need a coach. Right. All of a sudden you had your, like, I just, I just inception you type of thing through my right, story. Right. Because now you're like, man, like maybe, maybe this guy can help me. Right. And now yeah. all of a sudden I can be like, Hey, you know, do you like, like, what do you think? And, and, and now you're like open for the pitch because now you're like, like you realize that, yeah, like, you know what, it's powerful and maybe I am struggling and maybe I need a bit more guy and maybe all these different things, no different than your customers that are needing that are doing. So read secret seven and eight. Okay. And, and answer the questions and send them to me. Cause like the, the questions are basically like, um, actually, if you have it, I can just show you the page where it is, the questions. Uh, yeah, let me just see. So I can just pinpoint the page and yeah, like, you know, of course I would recommend like read the whole book if you can, but you know, it really, you only need to know. Expert secrets. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Secret seven and secret eight are really the is main she... two. Oh, my dog's following me. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, I got it. Uh, secret six. Mm -hmm. Secret nine. Okay. Secret eight. Okay. You got a secret seven. My favorite number, so it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the hero's two journeys. Yeah. So throughout this whole time with even, um, you know, a lot of, um, let me just go back to the sheet that you filled out. You know, throughout basically the avatar and all this, like one of the biggest challenges that you've had is to like being able to separate and differentiate the external from the internal and which really comes back to this, the heroes to journeys, the external is one of the journeys and the internal is the other journey. 
Okay. So as you go through it, I think you'll start to, to, to plug yourself into it. And if you go now with me to page, um, there, page 123. These are the questions that I want you to like answer. 23. Okay. One through eight. Yes. One through eight. Yeah. The back. what's the backstory that gives us a vested interest in the journey. So I'll already tell you this one, cause this is kind of what we did today. You said my epiphany story, my backstory is I was, you know, born with, with, with certain talents, certain interests, certain things I wanted to do. You know, um, my, my uncle came with this really cool, um, you know, crystal radio kit when I was seven. And right. So that's the, and, 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 and maybe you can say, I mean, I would recommend do share, um, you know, that and you don't even need to say that, you know, it was your mother or whatever you can say like, Hey, you know, so, uh, uh you know, uh, growing up, I had a, a difficult childhood or like whatever, again, amount of detail you want. But of course, the more right. vulnerable you get, the, the more you connect with people, because a lot of people, chances are they're, are through a, you know are going or, or have gone through a very similar situation mm -hmm. with with family with someone passing with 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 a uh, divorce with right like these things happen happen to everyone yeah. every single one of us so yeah and then and then you go into into two your desires what is it that you want to accomplish well the external we already know you wanted to create awesome things you wanted to you know put your ideas into reality and all this the internal is really that sense of powerment. Uh, empowerment that we talked mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. that that's really the, the 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 internal right you went from like kind of like a oh struggling you know kind of trying to follow your role trying to find where you what you're supposed to do to like man like when i do this i am me my purest essence and i know that this is what i'm supposed to be doing you feel yeah. alive you know um so then yeah and then you go into hey like for example let me ask you right now Let, let's let's uh make it easier for you with, uh, for homework what was the what was the wall what do you think was the biggest wall that you hit before you, um, you know, when you were failing with all these different things, what was the biggest wall that you, that you had in, in becoming who you are now? Um, I always, like generally speaking, I mm -hmm. had a difficult time learning mm -hmm. and I didn't know why until after college. Mm, okay. um, it just never made sense to me. It, I am, and I believe that most people are, mm -hmm. uh, visual learners. Mm -hmm. You're, most people are not audio learners. Yes. Um, and that didn't become apparent to me until, like, college, I did horrible. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you, you know the old joke, what, what do you call a doctor with a C average? <laughs> no, no, I yeah. don't know that. Yeah, doctor, right? It's like, <laughs> like, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, it doesn't um, matter here. Uh, so, so that was kind of me. What do you, what do you call an engineer with a C average? You call him an engineer, right? So. Um, and it was because everything was so abstract. Mm -hmm. There was no, ta there was no tangible, like, why do I do this formula? Who, who cares? That, like, I, I think Elon Musk put it best, right? Mm -hmm. If, if I was to, if you had no idea what a screwdriver was, right? Mm -hmm. So just try to imagine like, you don't know what a screwdriver is. Yeah. You don't, you don't know what a screw is, right? And if, <laughs> yeah, and if I, true. and if I show, said to you, look, this is what's called a screwdriver and you turn it. And I said, this is what's called a screw and you turn it. But if nobody ever shows you that one goes into the other, how would you ever know that they never, work together? Yeah. You would never know. You would never know. So, in school, that's how it felt. It was yeah. just so so abstract. Like, so no abstract. No yeah. yeah. So that was definitely my biggest struggle. I just could not understand yeah. the why. And you know what's funny? I think that's exactly the same struggle of not understanding the why of people not buying the Arduino. Mm. You, need, you need to help them paint a more clear picture. The same way how they how you need to be a visual learner, they need to be a visual learner too, but not just in showing them what, what the breadboard does, but everything that we've been talking about. You know, when you go into these stories and when you even go through these chapters, I want you to do, you know, let's let's cross with me to the to the woo-woo world for a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember that exercise that um uh, um Tra 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 Llewellyn did with us that, that we all, all felt like, man, that's really cool. Like it was like 30, 40 minutes. And, oh yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yes. So visualization, one of the biggest forgotten keys 
that like ancient wisdom like has always harnessed you know most often than not and this is something i'm starting to implement because i recently kind of like rediscovered it Mm -hmm. where where every day before i go to bed like before i actually like sleep Mm -hmm. i I visualize my first like couple hours of the day of the next day of the next day Mm -hmm. yeah and then what that does, it, it, it creates this like momentum in my mind. And then when I woke up, wake up, I'm not like reacting to things and just kind of stumbling over the day. I'm like clear. I'm like, boom, first hour, boom, this. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to answer this. I need to put, and then I'm like, I already feel like with that first hour, I already conquer my day and I get momentum. And then I just feel like amazing throughout the day. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it's no different here. When you go through your stories, like really try to go into your memories hard, like go close your eyes, like, you know, take a, take a, take a walk, uh, you know, put some music, uh, smoke weed, whatever you do, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but go into that state of like visualizing so you can really give life to your memories. Like, you know, what was, what was your uncle wearing? Like, where were you? Were you sitting? Uh, did, did someone said something? What did you feel? What did like ask yourself those like questions to like make your memories like richer essentially? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can do that. You know, and as you answer the questions, because what that's going to do is it's going to give us such a clear picture of what that story looks like that when we get to like, okay, time to write the actual Facebook ad, it's going to be super easy because you're going to be able to like, play with it you're gonna say okay you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna write this much and copy but i'm gonna be on camera saying this and the combination right. of the two will be like really cool or i'm gonna do mostly copy and i'm just gonna have a picture of this and like you'll know what what format you can you will deliver it the more clear that that story is in your mind okay okay so that's yeah that's literally um you know one of the one of the most like miss I guess like overlooked pieces of like marketing copy whatever that like really it's no different than the wall you had like I think we all have a huge problem understanding the why understanding how it applies to me to my situation specifically and sometimes when we just see all the cool things that a product can do sometimes honestly we can make connections you know, like yeah. I'm sure your teacher in college thought that you were making the connection with the way he was teaching it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but he was probably convinced in their mind. If you were to interview him, he's like, yep, you know, I'm, I'm explaining it to them. They should be able to get it. Right? Yeah, no. It, that was it, horrible. <laughs> it, it, and you know what? And it's no different. It's no different than the way that you and I market sometimes where we paint a really abstract picture or we just – tell them the things without actually just kind of guiding them to paint the picture in their own minds. Cause that's really what, what you're doing through your copy, through your ads, through your everything. You're really just helping them paint a picture for themselves in their mind. So they understand all the whys from the external whys to the internal whys to the practical like feature, like, you know, benefit driven whys, but they all need to kind of like, live in those different levels from the Mm. external to the internal. And you, you know, if you go too much too fast, then you overwhelm them. So it needs to be that nice, like, okay, like this is the backstory. This is the wall. And sometimes what you'll end up happening is you'll have mini epiphany stories inside each of the steps of the epiphany story. Mm. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I can totally see how that happens. So my own backstory on external, it's its own epiphany story. The own internal, it's its own epiphany story. The wall, it's its own epiphany story that is all inside uh, Epiphany Bridge, that it's all inside the hero's two journeys. Yeah, that's really, that's really interesting. <laughs> you see yeah, what I mean? It's really, like an really inception of his stories. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that next week when you, when you come back with like the, you know, the, the red chapters and the, and the stories answer and with this sheet, then we can move into the mapping the message part where we're now plugging plug and playing the stories where you're like, you know what, let's include some features here, but we'll lead with this story. We'll talk about the benefits of what the, you know, this can do, but I'll lead with the, green, uh, the, the Goonie Box story. And you'll know what story you'll pair with what benefit and what call to action. 
because it will yeah. follow that progression. Yeah, it will flow. It'll it will flow. flow. It will flow. I, I, and people will, like, especially the ones that are getting retarded, they'll be like, okay, so now I, so I know, like, where, where he came from. I know that his uncle helped him. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm kind of invested. But now that I understand why he launched the Kickstarter and how he overcame, wow, that, that, that kind of gave me hope. And then by the third time, they're like, man, now I understand why he went through all that journey only to focus on this product to, like, help my life. Wow, Guido is my hero. He is right. my guide. Okay, yes, yes, yeah. I will buy this, and then they go and they buy. I, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I uh, yeah, definitely. I, I actually just oh, I, I I told you about this. The the Connect IO guy. Yes. Um, I, I just before we started, like a, a minute before we started today, mm -hmm. he had another video, and I was like just intrigued, <laughs> you know, just because okay, mm -hmm. I already trust the guy, and and the, that his tool worked already, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's definitely interesting. Yeah, everything kind of flows, and like you know, sometimes we we like to think that you know we are like super two D almost, like very like square and plain where, where it's like you just need to know how much it costs and what it does and that and you'll make all the connections but in reality it's that it's both it's that art and science right where right. where it really has to be a nice mix of like trusting you emotionally getting involved emotionally because you probably your story probably reminded them of their childhood and your you know failure humiliation story of the Kickstarter and whatnot probably reminded them of the last time they failed, and that's why they probably just put it all in the closet and they haven't looked at it since. Because right. If you told them the story, now they're like, man, maybe, maybe I'll grab it again, and maybe I will buy this again, maybe I will go back into it. And those guys that you give those epiphanies become your biggest advocates. That's the yeah, same that's... as that guy Tony, uh, or what's his name? He's Anthony... Tony Ver Verduga, which his name translates into vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 those are the guys that become like yeah, like the ones that put on the shirt. You know, they they put on the Doctor Duino shirt and tell the world about how cool it is because they feel they've been with you in that journey because as you've given them this little epiphanies through your advertising, through your copy, through your everything. You're telling the same story, the same consistent story from A to Z. Doesn't matter if you're delivering it in one ad, or you're delivering it in a sales page, or you're delivering it just like this, like you and I just chatting. Mm. You're still telling the same story, which is your story. Mm. Okay, I, I can, I can definitely, definitely do it. You know, get behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think when you when you finish putting it together, I think you'll also and and look out for this because I'm gonna ask you because I think mm -hmm. that when you're done writing these questions down for yourself and you do this whole visualization and everything we talked about, I think you're gonna like you're gonna have this feeling that's gonna come with it of like oh of like wow like this is like my journey in the last like you know whatever far back you go right. And, you, and you'll be able to look at it into, in like one piece of paper and you'll say, wow, that's great. I need to like re even remember this for myself <laughs> right, when, right. when I'm feeling down or I'm feeling like, man, I can't do this. It's, it's all bullshit. And, 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 we, and we go in sometimes in those extremes. We want to like toss everything out the window and like, you know, like, like run away from everything. Right. But really, when you, when you write that story, look out for that feeling. You, you'll feel this sense of like, of like lightness in you that you'll be like, man, like, now I can see why like this message would be so much more powerful because that this same feeling of lightness of empowerment that I just finished on, on not making a ton of sales, but literally just writing your story will give you that right. feeling. Right. And you'll know that that same story told to your audience will give them their own stories. Not, and that, and that's part of the thing too. You know, sometimes we think that we, that these stories are like about us, but they're not about us at all. They use our story as a clutch almost as a, mm. You know, as a, as a bridge, really, that's why it's called the Epiphany Bridge Story. Mm. <laughs> because you're really just bridging the gap between where they are and where you are through your story. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting to see, especially how it, it uh, kind of gets mapped out. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, so right now, yeah, focus this week on on writing a bunch of of, of epiphany stories following that format you know 
go, go from like the very back origin stories to what happened in college, like break it down into those big milestones, right? Like your childhood, like your teens, your college, your like, you know, career, your job and like where you're now, you know, you can just break it down in those bigger pieces and then we'll, we'll start plugging them in um, next week. So this, uh, let me just make sure I get this here. Uh, mm -hmm. the backstory. So like, am I just, do I do this with each, each like thing, like Goonie box, do one through eight and then college one through yeah. eight, you, you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. I, I, ideally that that will be, and even though we might not use all of them, it right. will just really help you get very clear on how to tell them yourself, you know, cause like the first like three, four, stories that you put together in this one to eight will be a little painful will but after i'm telling you after three or four times that you do it over and over and over then you'll be like oh okay yeah so much easier to the point that you'll just be able to think of a time like you know your childhood or this and you'll be able to almost put those eight in your own mind without having to go into them like you know <laughs> yeah i gotcha yes. yeah yeah so i would say do that and and of course you know um all of it related to yeah, to, to to electronics and to electronics to, to exactly to to this perfect avatar because I think I, I I think you got it now I think I think you're clear on your avatar you know after after a while um, and I think you'll get it more clear as you as you put this story that you might want to even go back and like re-edit some stuff but 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 that's basically what it is you know their internal is their is their self-esteem and, and and it's driven by confidence and empowerment and that feeling of being proud of what they do and their creation. And their external is all the creativity, creativity and empowerment. So that's really the two pillars you're kind of like telling throughout. Like everything. So with all of the stories, I should really be touching on the creation portion of it and then the empowerment yeah. portion, of it, right? Yeah. With all of them. Okay. Oh, with all of them. Yeah. I, I, I think highlighting those points will give you um, a consistency of message. Yeah, gotcha. Which, which is really needed because again, it doesn't matter if they're being retargeted or they're just looking at it for the first time. As they go through your funnel, as they go through your even after they buy, like you're still telling the same story. Like I love what you said over here. Like this is really good, and this is why I chose to like jump on board. We know with you because um, where is it here on, on the process? Like you really do want to give them internal support. You do want to you know knowing that I am there for them after the sale. Like that's really sure. key. like that, that, that just shows that you're not doing it out of like greed and out of like, just like your own thing. You generally want to help people. Yeah. You for generally sure. want to, want to make their life easier. You're like, man, like wake up guys. Like I'm trying to help you guys. And everyone's like, eh, like, why does it this? And they're like, and you're like, Oh, you don't get what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> <laughs> you're missing it. <laughs> you're missing it. You're missing it. Yeah. So I think you're clear on the avatar. Then when you get clear on the stories, then we'll be clear on the, on the, sales and marketing message and then it's just plug and play all right so maybe what i'll do is i'll i'll do like one and then i'll send that to you and then maybe we can maybe just yeah. give me some feedback yeah. that, so that that way when i go to the next story yeah let's do that mm -hmm. yeah that might be more iterative okay cool yeah yeah i think that's literally it man yeah read uh i would say read the intro first just so you, you see that potato gun story because it's really cool. And, and notice, because now that we're in the whole story thing, just notice how he tells it. Notice mm. like the words he used. Notice that he's really telling the same epiphany story format. He's like basically drinking his own Kool-Aid as, right, right. as he tells you that story. But it's so covertly that unless you know what he's really doing, you, you literally just think that he's just saying his story. Right, but he's actually, he's, he's setting you up. Exactly. Exactly. He's setting you up. That's why he purposely and carefully put it at his intro. He didn't just think, oh, what's a cool story I can think about? No. He's building the attractive character. He's building step one, which is that report, that backstory. Mm, okay. And he talks about like, oh, like my wife was like mad at me. And he talks about some financial issues. And, and so he touches on things that it's like everyone can relate. It doesn't matter if you're building a potato gun, a goonie box, or you're trying to coach entrepreneurs you relate right right you relate. <laughs> and then and that sets you up for all the whole rest so yeah read the intro read chapter seven or secret seven read eight and then you'll be you'll be ready for it all right cool cool sounds good sounds good man this is, this is good 
think you're gonna get a lot of credit. And I'm telling you, look for that feeling of lightness when you, when you, when you, as you write each of those epiphany stories. It's so there's something powerful there. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. This will be uh, an interesting kind of reflection. Yeah, because I haven't, you know, who, who does that, right? Who like looks? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it's it's almost like where where your marketing career, sales, all that meets like your like inner self and your memories and your you know own story it's kind of like that nice middle point uh reflective and also uh business yeah yeah for sure cool man all right well let me know how it goes yeah okay we'll do thank you tell your wife again that was very insightful yes (laughs) i will tell my no i'm telling you my wife is like a superhero man she's 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 (laughs) got something for me she's opened my eyes so many so many times throughout these like last like 12 months like it's uh Credit where it's due, you know, blessed. <laughs> yep, absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. Well, I hope your dog, you know, keeps feeling better. And uh, Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she's you. resting. Yeah, because I know that when any family or pet issue or anything like that, it just takes a lot of, like, headspace from us. Uh, it's hard to do any entrepreneurial or any creative stuff because creative takes energy. And if yep. your energy is, like, drained because you've been thinking so much about, like, obviously someone you love, like, it's tough. Yeah, for sure for sure so, so yeah man hope everything works out this week and keep me yeah me too posted. will do all right awesome man have a good week you too bro take care okay, bye-bye. Bye.